Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany and in today's video we're going to be doing some fun Halloween crafting. So grab a snack and let's get started. I recently mentioned that we were going to be having a crafting day at my neighbor Stacy's house and I figured I would take you along with us. So we're getting started with a cocktail. Stacy was making us some delicious cider based mules using a caramel vodka. If you're interested in this recipe, I will link it for you down below. They were absolutely delicious. I'm not usually a mule fan, but these were so good and I definitely want to make these again. On this day, we had planned to do three crafts. We were going to be making cement uh, pumpkins, which is what my neighbor Sandy and I are setting up for here. We also were going to be making the terracotta pumpkins that are a dupe for the Pottery Barn pumpkins, as well as this ghost pillow. So we didn't get them all finished in one day. We had high hopes, but that's okay. We did what we could, but we're going to get started with the cement pumpkins. So for this, you're going to need plastic pumpkin uh, pails, and I am starting out by spraying the inside of the pails with a Pam or some kind of non-stick spray. And you can make these with a nice little hole in the middle to make them a planter or to use some kind of candle. And you just spray a cup of some kind. We are using red Solo cups. Spray those with the non-stick spray along the outside so that way when you pour the cement into the plastic pail you'll just push the cup down into the center to create that little bit of a hole as you can see we are using a large garden shovel you definitely should use a hand shovel that would make this job a little bit easier but we didn't have one and we're also using quick set uh, cement so you'll just mix it to whatever the directions are on the package and I would highly recommend using the quick set. However, we did run out and did end up using just regular cement and that worked perfectly fine. We just left it sitting a little bit longer. So we filled a big pail and then this little pail and then we went back and repeated the process until all of us had a pumpkin. Next up, we're going to work on the terracotta pumpkins here. So we're getting started with this matte paint in the Sherwin-Williams color pottery urn my husband Danny was great he picked this up for us at Home Depot like I said we got it in a matte finish and this has been done so many different ways I have seen so many different videos where people do the painting with the baking soda mixture mixed in you can do that and it does add a little bit more of a chalky texture. If you put a lot of the baking soda in, it might even give you more of a stone finish, a little bit more textured finish. I was just painting this on without any baking soda for the first two coats or so because I knew I was gonna have to add a few extra coats to this to make sure that it went all the way through. What I would say is that the one thing I skipped doing that I really shouldn't have was priming them. They definitely have chipped and I had to go back in and touch them up. But if I would have used a primer, that may not have happened as quickly. So I do regret that. However, a lot of these light up and they had lots of wires and such inside. And I didn't want to have to worry about using painter's tape and getting that all sorted out. So I just painted them as they were. I've seen lots of different renditions of this where they used clay to create a different type of um, stem to kind of mimic that Pottery Barn look. However, I just left them just as they were. I had a lot of them to paint. I had little ones, medium ones, big ones, but I wanted a big variety so that I can put them kind of all throughout my home. 
So this is several days later, <laughs> full transparency, and I have laid out two trash bags here on my counter. You can't really see them because my counter is white, but I'm just pulling all the pumpkins out. They have all dried and they need a little bit of touching up but I pulled them all out and I've got my son Ryan here. He's actually gonna help me paint them. And I did decide to use a little bit of the baking soda for this final part, just to make sure that they had a little bit extra texture before I put the flower. So we're just using foam paintbrushes here. You can use whatever kind of paintbrush you prefer. I'm opening up our paint. We're gonna put a little bit on this paper plate here and mix in our desired amount of baking soda. You can put in whatever you prefer. Like I said, there are so many different renditions of this. You can try it you know, any way you want, whatever works for you. I put a decent amount in there and it does dry very quickly. So when you're using the baking soda, just make sure you're moving at a quick pace and getting this done as quickly as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and work on adding a final coat, coat of paint onto these and then we're gonna move on to dusting the flower. Once you have a fresh coat of paint on, you're going to use a sifter to just sift some flour onto the top of your pumpkin. Now you can do this however you want. If you would like a lot of uh, the white powdery substance on there to make it look a little bit more aged, you can put more than I do here, but I wanted mine to just have enough to give it that pottery look, but not too much that it looked clumpy or you know it, it just looked like it had too much on it so i'm just adding on like i said this little top layer here of paint and then i'm going to use the sifter to sift on some of the flour and then i'm going to use another dry foam brush to uh, kind of push the flour down across the front and the sides and brush it off a little bit i did let it dry first probably about four or five minutes before going back in. There were still a couple of parts that were a little bit damp, but for the most part, it was dry. And I'm just using this brush to pull the flower down along the edges and brush off all of the excess. And this is what gives it that pottery look and really, really finishes off your pumpkin. <laughs> This is a super easy project and honestly I think these pumpkins are really pretty. It just gives them such an elevated more designer feel and I think these are going to look gorgeous whether they're on the front porch or on the inside of my home which is where I think I'm going to use them. 
I will say that I have not finished them off with any kind of finishing spray. I'm concerned that it's going to change the paint if I spray them, but I do also feel like they do need to be sprayed because the flower can just kind of continue to flake off. I would never want these to get wet. I feel like it would completely ruin them. It would goop up the flower. So if you plan on putting these in your uh, yard or on your front porch, make sure that you put something on them that's going to help waterproof them a little bit because they are not waterproof whatsoever, but they sure are pretty. And here they are completely finished. I love them. Next up, it was time to get our cement pumpkins out of the plastic. And I'm gonna be honest, this was definitely a labor of love. Thank you, Danny, for helping me get this done. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, you're just going to use a box cutter or some kind of sharp tool to slice down the side of your pumpkins. You're probably going to need to do three or four slices and then you'll just peel it off like this and you'll have your adorable cement pumpkin inside. Now there's a number of different ways you can finish this off. You can use a black Sharpie or paint to paint the eyes and nose and mouth if you prefer. However, I decided that leaving mine just the way they are was perfect. I love the age look that it gave and it just kind of kept it super relaxed and a little bit more neutral and I love how these turned out. And here they are finished. Like I said, I love how they have that neutral feel to them. These pumpkins I think will be perfect either here on the porch or inside my home. And I can't wait to decorate with these. For our final project today, I'm going to be making this adorable macrame ghost pillow. And this was something we started when we were all together. I actually cut all of my macrame pieces here while we were all together, but I headed home a little bit early from our crafting day because it was Ryan's birthday party. Well, birthday, not his party. So I am going to glue these on. I'm just kind of putting them on the pillow to figure out where they're going to go. And originally I thought they just needed to kind of be placed all around on the pillow. And then when looking at the pillow picture, they definitely were more symmetrical. So that's what I did there. And then once you have your first initial piece of yarn laid out, you just kind of layer the other ones inside like a little rainbow. Push them together so that they look like a little ghost and then glue them on. Now if you have fabric glue, that would definitely work perfectly for this. I did not have fabric glue, so I'm using E6000. If you are a dance mom, you know all about E6000. It's like the best uh, adhesive for any kind of rhinestone, but I figured that would be perfect for this. It dries really, really strong and it was perfect. So I just went through and put a little bit under each ghost. It took a little bit longer than 
I had anticipated, but I was watching Hot Ones and it was fine and it got me through. So got all of those connected and then you're going to go in with a pair of scissors afterward and trim your macrame pieces so that they are the desired length. I didn't want mine to all be the exact same, but I wanted them to be roughly the same. So I trimmed them down so that way they were the perfect length and I tried to make sure that they were all frayed a little bit on the bottom. I just felt like that kind of added to the relaxed feel of the pillow, gave it a little bit of a fringe look. And then I also just went back in and made sure that all of the pieces were glued down and nothing needed to be, you know, glued down a little bit more as you saw right there. I just added a little bit more then it was good to go. And I went through and made sure that each one was glued and cut and ready to go for some eyeballs. To make the eyes, I took a piece of black felt and folded it in half and then just cut little tiny circles out. I tried to keep them as close in size as possible, but none of them are perfect. None of them are perfect circles. None of them perfectly match, which I think kind of adds to the charm of the pillow. Once you have them all cut out, make sure that you glue those on. I used hot glue for this just to make it go a little bit quicker, but you could also use E6000 or fabric glue and that would be perfect. Finally, we're gonna stuff it with a pillow insert. These are from Amazon. I'll definitely link them for you down below. The pillowcase itself is also from Amazon and you'll wanna look for a off-white kind of creamy color so that way your macrame kind of blends in and stuff it with your pillow and this is good to go. And here is the pillow finally done and on my sofa. I love how it looks. It's so sweet and I feel like it just adds a very carefree touch to Halloween decor. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I'd love to hear about it down below. If you aren't subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and come back for more. And until the next one, my friends, take care.